All right, in this episode, we talk about the biggest myth that baseball players cling to and how you might be running out of time. Brent Porcy and Stephen Godana here at the At Top Velocity Hashtag Pitch Tips Show, where you go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, even Snapchat, At Top Velocity Hashtag Pitch Tips. Uh, Snapchat. What would you call it? Snapchat. Uh, hashtag Pitching Tips, Top Velocity, At Top Velocity Hashtag Pitching Tips. We'll answer your question on the show. Um, and if you haven't already, go to 3x uh, or topvelocity.net and check out our 3x Velocity camps, which are coming up. Uh, don't have a lot of space left. We'd love to get you in there. Come down here, learn the approach, get you. Uh, Throwing harder. Um, so, what's our question for today? Ethan Wells asks, what are the biggest myth baseball players still cling to, especially at the higher level, and why are they so hard to debunk? Good one. Yeah, it's a good question. Because the one that, like, obviously is a big part of this approach, and I'm gonna tell a long story about it, it's still the, the issues of weight training, heavy load weight training for performance enhancement, for pitching velocity. You know, will do uh, high velocity pitchers w uh, lift uh, or do they not? Why is my coach not supporting me as a pitcher to do some type of heavy load training? Why is he separating me from the rest of the team and our weight training approach? Why can't I not do certain types of lifts? Obviously big myths about it, you know, and it's, it's something big that just happened. Um, I know he's a position player, but Bryce Harper won the National League uh, MVP and he's claimed to have a 375 power clean. This guy was a pitcher in college, could hit mid 90s. Okay, so um, obviously there, Chapman, big lifter. We see pictures of him on his uh, Instagram page with these gigantic biceps in the weight room. He's the hardest thrower of our time. Uh, Steven Godani found an article about uh, them saying he was faster than who? Billy Hamilton. He's faster than beat Billy Hamilton. They have witnesses saying he beat him in spring training in a sprint. Um, so, um, are, are these just genetic freaks? Are these guys developed? I'm going to say obviously a bit, little bit of both, but I'm still going to debunk the weight training uh, for pitchers uh, to enhance performance and prevent injury. It's a big myth that it doesn't work. It completely works. And it's just because you've been in a bad strength and conditioning program and you don't see a transfer doesn't mean it work. It does take a good program to do it but it works and it works very well. You look at someone like Noah Syndergaard, right? Squatting 400 and something pounds, 500, 450 or something. Um, you see the other Bettis, we had Chad Bettis, a 100 mile an hour guy deadlifting like 450 pounds, okay? It's starting to open up. Now with Instagram and Twitter and all these things, we can see more what these guys do, which baseball is really not highlighted because they never felt it had a place. Mm -hmm. But if we look back to how this happened, um, you go back to really the steroid era. Unfortunately, the steroid era proved that uh, baseball was wrong, that you could, or it actually showed that really baseball was a power game or could be a power game. Really before the steroid era, it was a, as much a finesse game as it was a power game. And then those who came in and abused steroids exploited and dominated with the power aspects of the game. And now that we've cleaned that up or still cleaning that up, uh, we found that we can still take that approach, a power approach, and do what those steroid guys were doing. They weren't just doing steroids and going out and playing. They were lifting to enhance, the steroids would enhance the lifting, the effects of the lifting, and then they would have more power on the field. We can now do that with, in, in a clean environment. We're better at it than they were in the 70s and 80s. Uh, you know, in Jose Canseco's era, it was, you know, it was cool getting to play with Jose Canseco when I grew up uh, and be around him and, and, and kind of witness those guys. It was also something I didn't like either because I wasn't a user. So being able to, to compete with those guys at that level without um, you know, abusing uh, steroids or using steroids uh, to compete and had to compete against them without, them, without using 
uh, it was it was really challenging when you knew the guys who were using. But that aside, I don't need to go into the steroid era. It was just a, a change in baseball that opened up a uh, power game. Also, shortening the the uh, innings of the starters. Uh, you know, now starters are five, six inning guys. Um, opened up a short reliever. Definitely brought in the closer. Allowed guys to throw harder. Then that became more of a commodity because it became more effective, and it's still more of a commodity. Now we've got guys up to 100 miles an hour. But there's a big link to that and the way we train them, heavy load training. There's a big link to 100 miles an hour guys right now and the fact that we have, hun we have a handful of guys or more doing it to the training approach. Of course, to how the game is, is adapted more to a power approach, but the training to get us to help these guys get there is key. Of course, genetics is still a big part. But what it shows is if you don't have the genetics, uh, it gives you a tool to be able to still elevate your game and not go, well, I guess I'm just going to play rec ball the rest of my life. It still gives you hope. So that's something that I, be, I believe is still not ex truly accepted. You know, I was lucky enough to sit down with, with a, a president of a major league club uh, this past year, and he truly believes it's a big part of the game now, lifting, but he knows it's a slow process in getting these pitching coordinators, getting these uh, uh, front office guys to open up to this who've kind of been uh, really living in the past of uh, that wasn't really a part of the game um, and, and it's changing so we're seeing it change but still there's a lot of coaches out there fighting and there's a lot of coaches out there saying it doesn't work there's a lot of coaches saying it does the opposite it, it reduces performance and it, and it hurts you of course all this can happen but the point is if done correctly if done effectively it, it's amazing and, and it's what's happening to the game today so if you don't know uh, you know, a heavy load Olympic based approach is a big part of the 3x pitch velocity program. That's why it works. That's why it works better than anyone out there. And I'll put it out there to say that anyone challenge that. It works better than any other approach out there because we take the most effective power enhancement approach to pitching and we make sure it transfers the skill through our biomechanics approach and we get the best results. We've got it all the way up to the major league level with David Ards, my guy who came in here barely throwing, you know, 85 in my facility. Um, was topping out at, lucky at 89 in AAA that year, who we got him up to touching 95 in spring training this year and a chance, and, and he got to play with the Braves most of the season. Um, so we, we, we've seen it work all the way up to the big league level, and it's great to see it work at the big league level because they play so, much more, so many more games, and David was able to get it into the end season approach in a big league season, which was huge. So we've seen it be improved across the board and it's really, guys, what's happening. The game is changing. Lifting is a big part of it now and those who are fighting it are gonna lose. I'm sorry, those coaches fighting it will lose and it's unfortunate for the pitchers that are on those teams and with those coaches because it's gonna make it harder for you to have success. And unfortunately, no one wants to be, how is that a good coach? A coach is making it harder for you to have success. No one wants to be in that environment. My recommendation would be to uh, maybe find another team or to do it outside of that coach, away from that coach. I hate to say that, that you should go against the coach's will, but in the case to where I know something is true, I have the science to prove it, and I know it's the most effective thing for you, unfortunately, that's, that's my answer for it. So yeah, that, that's my uh, answer to your question. A heavy load training for pitchers works, and it's why we're throwing so hard today. Yeah, uh, just to capitalize on it, uh, the, the same guy who said that he witnessed um, uh, Chapman beat um, Billy Hamilton in the 60-yard dash in spring training also said during that spring training he was in the weight room and training like an absolute beast. So I think it's funny when people say, oh, like, look at pitchers, like Chapman doesn't lift, he throws hard. Like, obviously he's in there tearing it up, being a beast, and a lot of people just don't even know it. And then you look at... Um, Shelby Miller on the Atlanta Braves apparently was squatting 400 in season. Um, Noah Syndergaard. Yeah, Noah Syndergaard. Uh, Lorenzo. Yeah. Lorenzo for the Reds or something? So, oh, Michael? yeah, Michael Lorenzen. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if he's on the Got Reds video or the of Nationals. Him. But Dylan okay, yeah, Bundy yeah. squatting 455. So all these guys who are throwing hard, they're still lifting, and there's still this stigma around baseball that you're just not supposed to be lifting, and it's just absolutely ridiculous that uh, we're, we're – wanting guys to throw hard and then we're not training them like power power players so 
I think baseball is, is really, at, especially at the major league level too, really needs to start opening their eyes to uh, it being a power sport and that this is the, this is the way they need to train because the evidence is out there. It's right in your face and people are still trying to say that this isn't the right way to do it. And it's just, it's shocking to me how many people still want to go these conventional ways when we're like, we just put thing after thing in your face saying this is the way to do it, this is the way to do it, this is the way to do it, evidence after evidence and people still don't want to believe it. Yeah, and, and if you're out there watching this going, well, I have four examples of guys that throw 90 plus and don't work out, good for you and good for those guys. But if you don't have their genetics, then you'll spend the rest of your life talking about how great they were and not how great you were. You have no other option. It's your only option. Right, and if you give up on this, you're right. You're giving up on an option. There's no alternative, guys, uh, to, for you be able to improve or enhance what, what was been given to you genetically. So. You know, and, and the same thing, the same time too, guys, if you're hesitating on this issue, it can hurt you bad because it takes time to develop power in yeah, the body. Absolutely. It takes a good amount of time to develop it. And you don't have a lot of time in the, your career. You don't have a lot of time to get noticed at the next level before you have no options. So you need to come into an approach like this and start today, start yesterday. When I look back to my career, that's all I want to do is I want to go back and start earlier, right? Mm -hmm. We all want to go back and start earlier. This process, once we get in here and we see how it works, we're like, damn it, I should have come three years ago. Everyone says that who comes in here, believes it, commits to it. Every single person says they didn't start soon enough. Especially okay? if you have an off season too, where you only have four months to put in your work. Like even talking to David, David says like he, wish he, he wishes he could take a whole year off and just do the training, but when you're limited to just four months, you gotta, you gotta be putting your work in, uh, getting your athleticism up, getting your power up for the season as much as you can, because you only have a certain amount of time. So if you're a guy who's super far behind or something, you might need, need even more than that. And that's where it comes into where it's like, man, I wish I had started this earlier, because it is a time thing, man. You have to keep putting in the work and then it, everything will start coming. Yeah, and this is a really effective approach. I mean, also I wanna say too, if there's any, big leaguers out there, there's any minor leaguers out there that are just at a point in your career where you've hit the wall, you've literally hit as far as you can go, you've got the most out of your body, um, then th this is something that will take you farther. Um, and, and I think David is, is a perfect example, Bob Wheatley uh, is a perfect example, I have many other guys that, that you can look at, perfect examples. So if, if you're those guys out there and you wanna work hard, like you said, you don't have a lot of time, don't wait till a month before you go back to season to start this, we need a full off season. You really, really need to come down and check this out because it's it's gonna could be pivotal in your career. Look at David. David said it changed his career to come down here and take this a kind of approach. In the game, more guys are figuring this out, guys. More guys are figuring out this is this works. So you're gonna have more guys doing this, and you're really gonna get left behind uh, if you're not if you're not doing it. Yeah. All right. So that was a good question. If you have a question, go to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Top Velocity hashtag Pitch Tips. Ask your question. We answer on the show. Go to uh, topvelocity.net, check out, just read our pitching articles. Um, read everything you can on there and, and, and also go on my YouTube channel. There's some great videos I do on um, uh, basically uh, Olympic lifting for pitchers and, and you can see the, all the studies that I have behind it. There, I have a lot of studies supporting it. Um, and, and, and get more familiar with it because I know you're not gonna truly commit. I mean, it's not enough to watch this video and be like, all right, I'm ready to go. You wanna know because this is a controversial topic. So go over there and learn. If, not, if you need me to find it for you, post on this video your questions, your concerns. I'll give you the case studies. You go out and read it. Do the research like I did. You'll feel more comfortable and you better chance you're gonna wanna commit to something like this when you have that kind of research uh, that we've put behind it um, and, and that'll help you going forward. So uh, go out there and do that. And uh, if, you, if you have, you like the video, share, uh, like us on Facebook, uh, tweet us out on Twitter and we'll see you next time.